Hello comrades, so today we're doing a video which I've wanted to do for a very 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 long time and now that my last few masks have finally arrived I can do it. So this is my entire gas mask collection. Now this is mainly just the bags which I keep them in and the actual masks. Uh, I haven't included any of the filters because I'm pretty sure most of you know what they look like etc etc. So, um, yeah, I know it's not the biggest collection in the world, but, you know, I'm super proud of it anyways. I've been collecting them for about 10 months now, so I'll give you a rundown of each mask, and, yeah, hopefully you enjoy. So, comrades, this is the Polish MC1, and uh, it was the first ever gas mask I got, uh, I think about, about August last year. And this was originally, if anyone watches my uh, old TikToks, you'll know that I used the GP5 and the GP5M. This was originally, uh, there, originally supposed to be the gas mask that I was going to use, but I didn't in the end because I found out you could get GP5s really easily, and they were actually Russian. So yeah, Polish MC1. This is the bag for it, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Polish MC1. So, comrades, uh, my next gas mask, or gas masks, I'm going to do all these three because they're basically the same, is the SHM style hood masks. So, this one is the GP5. Uh, good classic gas mask, over 100 million of these made. So, that's why they're so common. Then we have the third mask I bought, which has appeared in some videos, especially my most viral one, the uh, How to Name Your Asian Baby video, if anyone remembers that. And I use this mask. It's basically the GP5 just with ear holes and a voice diaphragm. Yeah, you sort of hear the plastic in there. And that thing is absolutely lathered with talcum powder, so I don't wear it much. And then this one, the Polish MUA. It's got this longer exhale valve. And then it's got a little voice dive from here. So yeah, they're basically the same mask. So the next mask we have is the GP7. Probably the worst gas mask ever made in history. And uh, this one actually has a drinking tube. I'm going to show you there and if I can get it out. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. That's a drinking tube. And basically this thing was made at the end of the Soviet Union and the beginning of the Russian Federation because mine says, I don't know but it was made in 92, 1992 so this was after the Soviet Union and uh, yeah, it's basically one of the worst masks ever made because the strap system is terrible, you can't even adjust it and it's actually really uncomfortable this is the only gas mask in my collection which um, I've never wore because you literally cannot adjust the straps on this thing. So yeah, I suppose it's a good concept. But it, it's not really that, you know, good. So yeah, that's the GP7. And it didn't come with a bag. So I just keep it in this plastic wrapping thing. Okay, so the next mask we've got is another one that didn't come with a bag. So I've just kept it in this massive plastic stuff. Is this the SHMS gas mask. And this was issued to mainly snipers and soldiers, basically. And this one was made in 1975. And it's actually got some discoloration. I don't know if you can see. And it's actually pretty grimy. Now, what I don't get about this is, on the inside, I don't know if I'll be able to show you. Let me just invert the mask. It's actually really clean on the inside. It's probably the cleanest mask I have which is on the inside, but on the outside, like, you'd think that this thing has gone through a nuclear war or something. So yeah, the SHMS, SHMS, there we go. So yeah, another great gas mask, and uh, probably one of the creepiest I have. So the next mask we have is another one which didn't come with its original bag, but I do have a bag. This is a gas mask bag for the uh, S10 the British S10 uh, respirator in the British Army, but I got it because, you know, it was only like £6, and it was cool. 
And this one is my favourite gas mask, and the gas mask that I would probably use if for some reason there was a gas attack on my street or something. And this is the PMG. And uh, some people don't like this mask, but I, you know, it's my favourite in my collection. My favourite gas mask, which I haven't got, is the Israeli 4A1. So yeah, this is it. And yeah, another one that looks like a skull. Basically all of these Soviet masks look creepy in some way. So yeah, my favourite gas mask, the uh, PMG. Now, the next mask we have is a little bit bizarre. And it's this, the M1, the Yugoslavian M1. Now, these things have a tendency to melt. Literally, like, turn into goo. And mine has actually started doing this, but on the inside. But, because it's a strap mask, I don't think I'll be able to show you very well. I'll just get that. I don't know if you can see that, but there by the uh, oral nasal cup you can see it started to melt on the inside and the rubber up here is pretty flimsy as well and uh, actually in fact when I was washing this the colouring off the strap started to come off so you know it's pretty weird why it does that but god knows it's a pretty cool looking mask I got this one for about £10 so yeah and this is the bag now just to clarify Obviously never wear old gas mask filters, but these gas masks come with filters that don't have asbestos in. I think they have chromium. Now, chromium is bad for you, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, like, you can wear this thing, obviously not for long periods of time with the filter, but it's safe to wear short periods of time. You can see I've got a little adapter there because this is actually a 60 millimeter mask, not a 40 millimeter. So yeah, Yugoslav M1. Now the next mask, this mask, the PBF, might be a little a uh, bit familiar if you follow Big Slav X Man uh, on TikTok. He basically wears this mask all the time, and it's a cheek filter mask. But as you can see, I haven't got any cheek filters in there, and this one for some reason, like it's sort of. I don't know, like that wants to go there for some reason, I don't know. But yeah, this was basically issued to uh, airborne soldiers, I believe. And yeah, like this thing though, I don't wear it much, because it honestly, it's too small for me. And uh, it was it was uh, actually really expensive, considering this is like the smallest size possible. So I don't wear it much, because it really hurts my head, but yeah, PBF gas mask. Time for another cheek filter mask. And this is actually probably the most comfiest gas mask I have in my collection. This is the Polish MP4. And I don't know if you can see, you probably can't, I don't know. But I haven't got the cheek filters in there, which is good. So, that's what it looks like. And then on the inside, if I can show you, that's what it looks like on the inside. So yeah, it's actually a really comfy gas mask, probably the comfiest I have. And it's got voice diaphragm, intake exit, uh, valve, and yeah. So it's a very nice looking gas mask. This gas mask, uh, the Belgium M51, I actually got this one two days ago. And it's probably, you know, the one that looks the coolest in my opinion. And this one has been in service for a long time because this particular one, it's from 1958, and they started being used, I think, in 1951, and they were in service up until the mid-80s, I think. So yeah, it's a very retro-looking gas mask, and if you play Fallout 4, you'll recognise this mask. It's basically the default gas mask that Raiders wear, and you can find them in a lot of loot crates, etc. And this is our last gas mask. I got this yesterday. Most of you will recognise this if you watched the previous video. This is the Belgium, if I can show you there, L702. You probably can't see it very well because the footage is sort of flipped. But yeah, we uh, this one actually had a lot of markings on and we polished it up and it actually looks really nice now. Uh, I'll show you the inside. It's actually really greasy because how much like shiny polished stuff to put on it. 
This one didn't come with a uh, tin because these originally would have come in like metal tins. So I just keep it in this until I can find a tin at a reasonable price. So yeah, this one's from World War Two. It's the only World War Two mask I have. And it's a very classic looking gas mask, I will admit. And uh, it's very special. Very special. Because this thing's like 80 years old or something. So yeah, Belgium L702. So yeah, um, that's my gas mask collection. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. The next video will be a little special, so stay tuned. Suka bliat.